silver and gold, silver and gold. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. As you can see, Dior Holiday has arrived. This is going to be my full review of the collection. I have both of the eyeshadow palettes, both of the blushes, and one of the liquid lipsticks. You know we've got swatches, we've got demos. I'm going to show you how I got this look today. And of course, I also have comparisons with the Chanel Holiday Collection and a couple other products as well. So if you want to hear all of my completely honest thoughts, then keep watching. Okay, party people, let's dive in. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload new luxury beauty reviews just like this one every single week. And as a quick reminder, friends, I am going to be putting a shopping guide in the description box so that you guys could know an updated overview of where you can pick up all of these products. They sell out pretty fast. They're all limited edition. So all that's going to be linked down below and do know that I do use affiliate links. So thank you to you guys who use my links to support my channel. But enough of that, friends. Let's get into the makeup. We're going to start off with the eyeshadow palettes. The inspiration behind these, according to the Dior website, is the Tuileries Garden in Paris. Very beautiful garden, kind of like a public park. It's a royal garden. In fact, I'll put an image right up here. If you haven't been, pay it a visit next time you are in Paris. The first palette that we have in the collection is called Promenade Doré. This is supposed to invoke the royal gardens bathed in sunlight. You're walking through the gardens. The sun is shining on your face. You're taking a stroll about. And so this one has some beautiful gold tones, but I do really like the beautiful contrast of the silver shade that they have there. It's very bright, it's very metallic. You guys are gonna see in the demo that these shades are pretty pigmented and they have a really beautiful kind of foily sheen. However, they're not glittery or chunky or anything like that. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the demo. The second palette is called Night Walk. And if Promenade Doré was inspired by the gardens during the day, you can imagine this one is inspired by the gardens during the evening. I'm not really sure who's walking through like a public park in the middle of a city in the middle of the night, but hey, this is the fantasy that Dior is selling. This palette has beautiful silvery tones with a gorgeous contrast of that soft gold in the center. And then we also have a very versatile black shade, which is more of a true matte that we don't really get from Dior all that often. And just like the other palette, you get some good pigmentation and a really beautiful holiday-esque festive sheen. And then of course we have the two blushes. These come in the satin formula, which is my preferred finish from the reformulated Dior blushes. So I was happy to see that. Up first, we have the lighter of the two shades. It is extremely subtle. This one is called Precious Rose. And it's just that. It's a very precious, very light, very subtle, rosy peach. So you guys are going to see how this shows up on my very pale complexion in just a second. I don't think that these blushes swatch very well. So make sure you tune in for the demo. The other blush, much more pigmented. A lot of you who have a deeper skin tone, you're going to be happy to hear that. This one is much more pigmented. This one is called Splendid Rose. And this is more of, I guess you could say a true rose. There's a little bit of a sheen there because it is the satin formula. And once again, we're going to get these on my cheeks in just a second. And finally, friends, I have one of the lippies from this collection. This is the Dior Forever Liquid in the shade Fascinating. I'll show you the swatch here, but I really think that you need to see this on the lips to kind of see the full effect. These are a sequin formula, so they do have glitter in them. And all I'm gonna say is just wait for the demo. <laughs> wait for the demo, guys. And with that, friends, let's get into the demos. I'm gonna do one look first with Promenade Doré and Precious Rose. Then you guys are gonna see the look that I have on my face today. And then I'll do the lippy, and then we'll get into my final thoughts and the comparisons. Let's get into it. All right, friends, let's dive into Promenade Doré. I'm gonna go in first with the medium tone gold shade. I think in general, I'm going to create a look Look with all of the golds and browns in this palette and then I'm going to use the silver as kind of like a pop of contrast. So I'm starting off with the medium tone gold just kind of tapping off my brush and I'm going to get that all over the lid. This is a really nice one and done gold color. You have enough soft wearable very neutral colors in this palette where you don't have to create like a very dramatic look. Same for the other palette actually. You could use pretty much any of the shades in here as like a one and done, or maybe you just use one of the shades and then the darker brown to add a little bit of like 
depth and contrast, that kind of a thing. It's a really nice metallic. I don't see any like chunky glitters. There's a little bit of sparkle there. It's a little bit more than like a general satin, but it's not anything that's like crazy foily or high shine and it doesn't emphasize any texture. I'm going to take this lighter gold shade here and I'm going to apply this to the lower lash line so we can keep this a little bit lighter down below because I don't want the look to be too heavy. I'm also going to take that lighter gold once again and I want to apply a little bit here in the inner corner. This one is just a touch more sparkly than the other deeper gold. I would say in general, the lighter shades in these palettes tend to have a little bit more of like a reflect. Once again, it's not very chunky glitter, but they just have a little bit more dazzle. I think that's a good word. I'm going to be using the darker brown here to build up a little bit more depth. This is not a true matte. It's more of like that classic Dior satin, but that's okay. It doesn't look crazy when applied into the crease. I'm going in very lightly with a fluffy brush to show you guys how kind of light and wearable you can make this because if it's not like wearable, you might not be using it every day. And also I think you get some pretty good pigmentation here. So if you have a deeper skin tone, I don't think you're gonna have a problem building this up. I wanna see if we could build that brown up a little bit more just for demonstration so you guys get an idea of the pigmentation. First off, look at my brush. A pretty good amount came off onto the brush. So let's put a little bit here. Yeah, I think this has really nice pigmentation and it's not patchy, which is nice because some of the reformulated deeper shades in the Dior palettes they're not the best. It really depends palette by palette. That's why watching these reviews is so important. Don't want you guys to waste $65 if one of the shades is a dud because then I just don't really think it's worth it. So I'm adding a little bit of smoke here. Obviously you don't have to add this much, but I think it looks really, really pretty and wearable. Definitely gonna need an eyeliner for this look in a second. I'm going to take the lightest shade in the palette here, which actually it's not really a topper shade. It has more sparkle and dazzle than the other shades, but it's not super sheer like you see in some other Dior palettes when you get the lightest shade. And I'm just gonna put that on top. I'm using it as a topper, but you could definitely use this as a one and done. It does have enough opacity to it. And I like that. I kind of like that I can use it for different things as much as I love a nice little like sheer elegant topper. And this right here, friends, is the look that I would create if I wasn't going to use the silver. So just kind of take a look there. Very beautiful, very wearable. Next, I'm gonna go into the silver and I'm gonna use this as a pop of color. It's not color, but it's a pop of shimmer <laughs> here in the inner corner. Wow, that's pigmented. I should have maybe just taken a little bit. Let's try this eye. Mmm, I like it. I've really been into the contrast of the gold and the silver ever since I got the Byredo Remembrance palette because that has those two, the gold and silver shades. I'm taking my little dim light powder from Hourglass and I am just carefully blending around the edges here because I did get a little bit too much sparkle right there. <laughs> I should have been more careful. These shades are actually pretty potent from Dior, not chunky, but they have quite a bit of pigmentation, which I like. All right, friends, here is the final eye look. All I did was apply some liquid eyeliner and also some mascara. I used the silver as a pop of color as like a contrast, but I don't necessarily think you need to. I think that the silver would look really beautiful just paired with the brown, or you could even pair it with the lighter color here. And it's gonna be, I don't know, less contrast, more about the silver. So you definitely can let the silver shade be the shining star, but for sure, there are a lot more kind of brownie and warm tones in this palette. So I wanted to kind of let those shine, but yeah, let me know what you think of this look. We are not done. However, I am going to be applying the Precious Rose Blush next. So let's get this one on my cheeks. It is a very light shade. This is a satin formula. I'm gonna start off with a lighter, wispier brush so that we can see how much pigment it picks up, how deep or maybe not so deep it looks on my face. And then if we need to, I'll switch to more of like a goat hair brush or something that picks up a lot of pigment. It has a dry formula, but I don't see like a ton of kick up in the pan. 
So let's get this on. It's very fragranced. <laughs> it's the first thing that I notice. Okay, so it's there, but it certainly is very, very subtle. And I'm using a very wispy brush, like I mentioned. So this is gonna give you like the most natural look. And honestly, I don't hate it. I kind of like it. It has a little bit of a satin finish when it goes on the cheek. When I swatch it, I really don't see that satin finish, but I think it's just because the pigment is all clumped up. When you actually spread it, you see a nice little satin finish. So let's try a different brush. This one is from Sonia G. This is the Soft Buffer, and it's a little bit more dense. It also is made of goat hair. So this will really pick up the pigment. Let's see if it makes a difference. It definitely goes on a little bit more opaque straight out of the gate, but this is kind of like all you're gonna get. <laughs> But a lot of you guys, you really like the soft, natural blushes. And I do think that this one is very natural. And it goes really, really well with the eye look. Something that's like maybe a little bit more glam. You don't want your blush to be too bold. What do you think? <laughs> there we go. That is Precious Rose. It's more like a peach or a nude. I like it. We are going to do a wear test of this look. So make sure you keep on watching because I'll show you how well these formulas wear both on the cheeks and on the eyes. But yeah, friends, this is the final look using the Promenade Dore and Precious Rose. Let me know what you think of this. Now let's move on to the rest of the products. On to the next palette. This is Nightwalk. I think I'm gonna do maybe a little bit more of a glam look with this one. I'm thinking maybe black eyeliner. We shall see. I'm gonna first dip into the silvery pewter shade and I'm gonna start off with putting this all over the eye. I like to kind of get a nice base shade with the Dior shadows because all of them are satin. Just kind of going all over with one shade to start is a good way to go about it because you might find that you need fewer shades for the look that you want. Just like the other palette, it has a really nice metallic sheen. I like the tone of this one. Like the Dior shadows are so good if you just want to use one, maybe two, because even this is just like such a nice, elegant kind of wintertime type of look. I'm going to apply that same shade along the lower lash line. I want this to be a little bit more sultry and I'm really liking the way this shade looks. So we're going to put it on the lower lash line as well. And I'm not getting any fallout. They're not like overly powdery or dry, which is good because some of the reformulated shades can get a little bit dry. Next, I'm going to take the brighter silver on this side, not the white one, but the light silver. And I'm going to put that on the inner half of the eye. And I also, I think I want to take that right here. I'm going to create a similar look as I did last time, just with these tones. Mostly because I think it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to see like the differences between the palettes. So you can decide like what kind of vibe you're going for. Notice the contrast between the darker gray and the lighter gray. The lighter gray has a little bit more glimmer to it, which I appreciate because then you can get different looks with different textures. I'm gonna start dipping into the charcoal color right here. I really like the way that this swatches compared to the holiday palettes from last year, which again, I'll do comparisons of everything. This one feels a lot more smooth and gives you a lot more pigment right off the bat. It's a very nice black, especially for Dior. I think sometimes the blacks, like they're either not that pigmented or they're like kind of dry. This black is pigmented enough that you 100% could use it as a liner as well. That would be good if you wanted something a bit more subtle. And you could wet your brush as well and kind of swirl it around in that shade. That will make it a little bit more pigmented and even easier to apply if you want to be really precise or if you're kind of like prone to mistakes. This is what we have so far, friends. Now I'm going to be going into the white shade right here. This one is the most sparkly. So I'm just going to tap off my brush. You can see I still have quite a bit of pigment on there. I'm going to dot that on top here in the center. This is kind of the look that I would do if I wouldn't dip into the gold. So this is kind of like your cool tone look. No gold. This is an option for you. You can add a liner just to kind of show you guys how you can kind of, you know, work in steps here, depending on how many shades is your preference to use. I think that this white shade 
it is a little, I don't know, you could use that as a one and done, but it's a little bit more transparent than the others. Still not a complete topper shade like some of the other Dior palette colors, but it's a little bit more sheer. It's definitely more for kind of like highlighting purposes. And next, guys, I want to go into finally the gold. So let's add a little pop of gold in the inner corner so that we can really see that contrast. I hope that this looks good. I think that it will. Okay, there we go. I feel like I needed to get a little bit more on there. This gold, it actually shows up a lot lighter than I thought it would. Let me swatch this on my hand so you can see. It's very... I don't want to say it's not pigmented. It's just more of a subtle tone. I think that this would pop up a lot more on deeper skin tones, but on me, it's a little bit more subtle. And honestly, I'm not mad about it. I really like it, actually. I don't mind that it's like bright yellow gold because a lot of you guys like cool toned palettes. And so you might be happy to hear that this isn't like a super warm yellowy gold. It's more of like a soft champagne. I like it. I'm going to go put on some eyeliner, some mascara, and I'll be right back. Here we are, friends. This is the eye look with Nightwall. Comment down below and let me know what you think. I love the frosty winter charcoal -y, smoky look that I get from this palette. And then, of course, just like the last look, I am going to apply the other blush that is in this collection. This one is called Splendid Rose. So Precious Rose and Splendid Rose. This is going to be a little bit deeper. So that's why I saved this one for this look because I don't know, maybe like a little bit more bold. We'll see if this one goes with this palette. It might be a little bit too rose for my liking. I haven't tried them together yet. Okay. This one definitely has more pigment and I need to buff it out a little bit more. I'm using a very, very soft squirrel hair brush. And I think the way to go, if you are pale like me, is probably to use something with a little bit more buffing power like this one. This one is also a satin. I feel like it might not be the best tone for this eye look, <laughs> but at least you guys can see the color. You can see that this is pigmented enough that it's gonna show up on a decent amount of skin tones. And you know what? Let me get a lot on my brush so you can see just how much you can pick up. And I'm going to blend it onto my hand there. I mean, I'm ruining the embossing, but that's okay. <laughs> Do it for you guys. You can see just how rosy you can get that. And I would say it has like a little bit of like a dusty rose quality to it. Like it's a little bit more muted. But the amount that I have on my cheeks right now, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more than I, I typically like. So I'm going to buff it out with a clean brush. Okay, I fixed it. I dipped into my Guerlain Meteorites with a little buffer brush. I buffed it out and now I think it looks really, really cute. So this is the final look, friends, with the other palette and the rose blush. Comment down below. Let me know which look did you like a little bit better? Which one do you think suits me better? Finally, friends, let's try on the Rouge Dior Forever Liquid. I have the shade 833, which is called Fascinating. Now remember, this is a liquid lipstick. It is going to be long wearing. It's going to be a little bit more of a matte finish. And as you guys saw from the swatches earlier, it does have a glittery finish. All of the liquid lipsticks in this collection have a glittery finish. So we're going to see what it looks like on the lips. I actually haven't tried this shade on yet. This is going to be the first time. And I tried to pick like the most subdued of the four that they had. So Let's try it on. I like the applicator on this one because I don't need a lip liner. I can get it on super duper precisely. It's a very thin formula. If you guys have ever tried these before, it has a little bit of like a silicone-y feel to them. Okay, so here's a nice even layer. I just kind of cleaned everything up. I love the color of this, but I need to hear what you guys think about the finish of this liquid lipstick. Check this out. It's straight up glitter. I feel like when you are applying it, you don't really see it. But as soon as it dries, it becomes very apparent that it is glitter. Let me turn my lights on real quick so that you can see it a little bit better. It is glitzy. It's glamorous. It's showgirl. It's giving me rockettes. It is, it's pretty glittery. They, they were not kidding when they said glitter. It's not even like metallic, like the ones from the Chanel holiday collection. These are 
glitter. So you guys are gonna have to tell me what you think of these. I also think that they are kind of emphasizing the lines in my lips. I'm gonna share a little bit more of my final thoughts. But there you have it, friends. This is the liquid lipstick. This is the shade Fascinating. Now let's move on to my final thoughts. All right, friends, you have made it. It is now time for my final thoughts. I'm gonna break everything down for you, let you know what I really think is worth it, because some products I think are better than others in this collection. Overall, I think the collection, it's nice. It's a little safe. It's a little safe, it's not groundbreaking, but there are some really beautiful pieces in this collection. If you were to ask me, Sophia, if I have to pick up anything from this collection, what should I pick up? I think it needs to be one of the eyeshadow palettes. I think the formula in these is stunning. Both of them are very good quality. You don't get any like patchiness or dustiness. You don't even get like a ton of fallout from these because they're very beautifully metallic and there is a little bit of glimmer to some of the shades, but it's not chunky glitter. You're not gonna get, you know, a ton of everything all over the face. I'll show you guys right here a wear test that I did with the Promenade Doré, and you will see I had excellent longevity with that. There's not a ton of fallout, and I didn't really get like any creasing or anything like that. The longevity of the products is absolutely fantastic. And I have a lot of Dior eyeshadow quince in my collection at this point. I do a lot of reviews for you all. And I have to say, even though these are like kind of dupable color-wise, I do think that they are some of the prettiest Dior quince that I have in my collection. I can really see myself pulling these out more so I think in the fall winter because they have that kind of like holiday glam type of feel. I still think they're really beautiful even though they're kind of dupable. Make sure you guys keep on watching by the way because right after this in a couple minutes I'm gonna be showing you guys a bunch of comparisons because I know a lot of you guys are wondering do I get these or do I get the Chanel palette? What about comparisons with the collection from last year? There's a lot of similar like gold and silver metallic tones. So make sure you keep on watching because I'm going to tell you which one is my favorite and which one I think you should get. So stay tuned for that. But if we're just kind of looking at this collection in a box, these are my favorite items. They're both super gorgeous and perform very, very well. Now with the blushes, this is a little bit of a different story because I just think that if I wasn't a YouTuber, I just really wouldn't need to pick these up. They aren't my favorite. I know a lot of you guys, you picked up some of the new Dior blushes when they came out with new shades. They reformulated them so they're a little bit different. I would encourage you to go and remind yourself of what you picked up before. If you've got any of those, look at what you have in your collection because I don't think that these blushes are all that groundbreaking. We are gonna do comparisons with these also in just a second. And I'm gonna show you guys some other formulas that I like maybe just a little bit more because the new formula from Dior, it is quite dry. It's a little bit on the dry side. The pro of that is that they last all day. They have really great longevity, but if you have dry skin like me, you might want something that has a little bit more radiance. You might want something that has a creamier touch. And so I'll cover that in the comparison section. But just kind of taking a look at these on their own, they're okay. They're nice. I like them. I prefer this one, the lighter one, because it's more subtle. It's better for my fair skin tone. If you're fair, I would probably go with this one. But just know it is very subtle. This one... I just don't really like this one at all. And that's just kind of my color preference. This is very rosy and it's very pigmented. And so I just don't think it suits my skin tone as much. I don't really reach for this color that much, certainly not with a bold eye look like this. I'm more gonna reach for like a terracotta. I like beautiful, you know, fall autumnal plum shades. If you subscribe to my channel, you kind of know the colors that I like. So it's not a bad blush. It's just, I think that this is definitely better if you have a tanner skin tone, a deeper skin tone. And for that, I'm happy that Dior included something that was a little bit more pigmented, but it's just not really my cup of tea. These are okay. I don't think it's a must really go into your collection and see what other blushes you have or go and maybe consider getting one of the ones from the Dior permanent collection because a lot of them are on sale right now. See sales at a bunch of department stores. Make sure you follow me on Instagram because I'm posting about this every single day and you might find something that you're gonna wear a lot more often. Lastly, we have the liquid lipstick. I think that these are probably a skip for a couple of reasons. 
Number one is just a big glitter bomb. There's something really fun about that. Like, <laughs> I don't think I have anything like this in my collection. It is the kind of thing that maybe I would wear on Christmas day as like a fun festive thing or to like an ugly sweater party. But for $47, for $47, like I couldn't believe I spent that much on a glitter liquid lipstick. You could probably go to the drugstore and find something like just as good. So I don't think this is that necessary. I also think this formula, it's a little bit drying for my taste. I would go for the new formula, the shiny version of these. So elegant, so beautiful. You can get a beautiful holiday red. I have Nude Touch. That's a really nice warm tone nude. They have Nude Look. That's like a classic nude. I would get those. I'll link them in the description box. This is probably not going to be a favorite for most of my subscribers. So I think it's probably a skip. So friends, that's what I think of all of the products. There's some things that I like. There's some things that are not really my cup of tea. But I want to remind you all that a lot of these things, they're kind of dupable. And so with that, I want to go into the comparison section. I'm going to tell you guys, you know, what these are similar to. So you can think about what you already have in your makeup drawer. And maybe you can save yourself a little bit of money or you'll feel super excited and great about picking something up from this collection. So let's get into the comparisons. All right, friends, we have some serious comparisons to do today because there are quite a few palettes that are similar to these, you know. They're silver and they are gold, and that isn't super unique, although it is pretty. These are the two palettes that Dior came out with last holiday season. You can see some similar tones. Now, I think this one, Galactic, it's a little bit different because you've got the burgundy in this like pink color, etc. So I think this one is different enough, but Cosmic Eyes is pretty similar. So I'm going to do a comparison specifically with Cosmic Eyes. This one, I feel like you have enough differences here. You know, maybe this shade's a little bit similar to this one right here. So let's do that comparison. So here is Promenade Doré versus Cosmic Eyes. I think that the formula between them is definitely good, although I don't really like the black matte in Cosmic Eyes in general. I think that the deeper shades from these palettes for this holiday are a lot better. You get a little bit more contrast and a little bit more impact, believe it or not, from the holiday ones from this year, despite there being a reformulation of the shadows. And here is Nightwalk versus Cosmic Eyes. I think that these are definitely different enough. And I think you guys can see what I mean here of this black being so nice and smooth versus the one from last year, which is really, really great. There's also a little bit more of like a bluey silver tone to Nightwalk. So I think these are different enough. And once again, I think there's a little bit more shimmer and metallic sheen from the new ones, which some people don't like. So just want to call that out as maybe a pro or a con. Here we go with the Chanel Holiday Palette. I promised you all a comparison and here we are. There's so many similar tones here. I really don't think you need all three of these. I don't even think you need two of these. I would encourage you to just buy one. What is the one that you're gonna reach for the most? I think the biggest difference here is actually the formula and the formula is gonna give you a slightly different vibe between them. So let's swatch them. So here we are friends. We have all three of the palettes swatched. I have the two Dior palettes on on either end, Promenade Doré on the left and Nightwalk on the right. And then I have the Chanel Lumiere Graphique in the center there. Now, I want to start off by saying these are all very beautiful palettes. All of the formulas are really nice. I think you just have to ask yourself, what shades do you already have in your collection? And what kind of looks are you more likely to create? I think that the two Dior palettes, the shades, part of it is the tones that they selected. I think that they pop a little bit more on the eye. And if you often feel like Chanel shadows are maybe not pigmented enough for you, I would encourage you to take a look at the ones from Dior. Dior. Now, I think the Promenade Doré, this is something that I can see myself wearing a lot just because I like golds, I like warmer tones. I also think this one is the most striking. I think if you have a deeper skin tone, this is probably going to be the most flattering. I think it's just going to really pop beautifully on those types of skin tones. I mean, it's going to look good on everybody, but that's kind of what comes to mind for me. The Night Walk, I really like this one because I don't have as many silver over palettes in my collection. And I think that the black in this palette is the best one for smoky looks. That's the one that I would pick if you want a traditional smoky eye and you want a little bit more shimmer, metallic sheen, and pigmentation. The Chanel one,
one is what I would recommend to people who maybe don't want their look to be as striking. They want it to be a little bit more kind of like elegant, subdued, like the shades blend into each other a little bit more. Notice how the tones of that one, they're a little bit more neutral. You do get that nice like sparkly topper as well. So if you like a good sparkly topper, go with the Chanel. It's really hard for me to choose which one I like best because they're all really, really nice and I would wear them for different occasions. If I was just a regular consumer and not a YouTuber and I still had my existing collection, I would probably get the Dior Nightwalk. And the reason for that is because I just don't have as many silver palettes. I have that have golds and browns and that kind of stuff. And so I probably would pick up this one just because it's a little bit more different. But honestly, guys, you know, <laughs> they're all really nice palettes. Hopefully this commentary and these swatches help you figure out like which one is going to be more worth the money. But I really don't think you need all three. You know, you could maybe even get Night Walk from Dior and maybe the Chanel one. So you have like silvers and golds. Just some ideas there, but hopefully this comparison is helpful. Another release from Dior for holiday 2023 are the two palettes from their backstage line. So we have Copper Essentials and we have Silver Essentials. I already have a full review of both of these palettes on my channel if you guys want to see like a more in-depth review and application. But I did just want to show you guys a side-by-side. -side. If you are someone that likes, you know, just more shades, more options, these might be good for you. I think the Copper Essentials is probably the most different. So I'm going to compare some shades from the Silver Essentials palette with the ones from mainly line right here. So here is Dior Nightwalk on the left and then the Silver Essentials palette on the right. Overall, you know, I really like the Silver Essentials palette. I'm very excited about it, but I do like Nightwalk better because I think that the formula for this palette is a little bit more metallic than the backstage if you want something a little bit softer. And if you also like the option of going with that kind of really beautiful purples, lilacs, aubergine sorts of shades, I think that that backstage palette is a really good option it's a little bit cheaper as well and you get more colors. I also just once again really like the black from the Nightwalk palette. The one that is in the Silver Essentials, it's more of like a charcoal. So if you like something more subtle, go with that palette. Also here, friends, we have the palette that is called Grand Ball. This is in the original formula and I think there are definitely some similarities here. You can kind of like dupe the vibes of these palettes. You can also dupe the vibes with the Chanel palette if you have Grand Ball as well. I think, you know, obviously there's no silver tones, which is also once again why I kind of would gravitate more towards the Nightwalk palette because I just have a lot of gold palettes. Let me show you guys a close up of the formulas. So on the left, I have the new holiday palettes, and then on the right, I have Grand Ball. Grand Ball, it doesn't have as much differentiation between those shimmers. It really just gives you like that deep shade there at the bottom on the right, and it's a little bit more like brown. But once again, you still get a lot of like really nice shimmery metallics and I think the formula has a bit more of like a creamier nature to it. It's a little bit more high shine and reflective. I don't know. Play around with Grand Ball. See if you still like it because these shades are really not that far off. And then right here friends I pulled out a couple of other comparison palettes for my collection. We've got Tom Ford Suspicion, Guerlain Jungle, and Viseart Bouillon. These all have a lot of gold tones so you know think about if you have these in your collection. If you want to get prom Promenade Doré. Is it a beautiful palette? Yes, but it's mostly golds and browns and then you got one little silver in there. So like if you had Tom Ford Suspicion, maybe you just use that and then pull some other silver from like another palette or you get this palette and then you can combine them and then you can just have all the same shades. So these are a little bit warmer. They're more brown. They don't have the silver, but I think you guys know what I mean. The Vizier Bouillon Quad. This is one of the petite fours. This is a great little, you know, more affordable palette and it's more pigmented than pretty much all of these. I just swatched a little bit here on my finger. Maybe I can get my camera to focus there. Yeah, you can see how beautiful and pigmented that is. And then finally, friends, here is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette up against the two Dior Holiday Palettes. I still think that Promenade Doré is just a little bit easier to dupe, maybe not exactly, if you have these types of palettes because it has the golds and the browns. This one is a bit more striking and more different just with the palettes that I have in my collection. 
collection. This is going to be a little bit more neutral, has more of like that nude brown fleshy tone. It's not as like holiday. It's not as glamorous as these, but you might be able to get a very similar look with the glam palette. Let's do a couple of blush comparisons, starting off with Precious Rose. This is the one that I got the most requests to compare. So let's give that a swatch right here. We're gonna do arm swatches. These Dior blushes, they do not, they do not swatch very well. The first one that I wanna show you guys is the Chanel blush from the fall collection. A lot of you guys asked for a comparison with this one. This one is though a lot deeper. See that? I know that also wasn't a very good swatch, but see how that one is much more coral? You can see right there. I know it kind of seems like it's going to be similar, but it's not. A lot of you guys also requested RMS Crystal Slipper. This is a really beautiful blush if you want something that is a little bit more glowy because the Dior ones, even though they're satin, I feel like they're pretty matte. You see that nice little sheen it gives there. A fancier option is this one from Hermes. This one is Rose Dore. This one came out last year. It's a really beautiful formula, but it's very expensive. It's kind of similar to Crystal Slipper. Honestly, get Crystal Slipper because it's cheaper and I'll put my coupon code in the description box if you wanna pick it up. I also have the Dior Charnel. Let me show you a side-by-side. -side. This is gonna be a little bit deeper. And I will say, guys, this is in the old formula. So the swatch is gonna look a little bit more different and more pigmented. They're all kind of like <laughs> same, same, but different. The Chanel one is the one that like pops the most and is the most coral. I also have Gucci Rosy Beige. This one's gonna be a bit like more toasty leaning and it's also very, very pigmented. I also recently have been wearing, I actually picked this up at the Chanel Boutique. This is Chanel Jersey. This is a classic, really nice, neutral blush and this one is also very very subtle just kind of like the Dior one but I feel like it's not doesn't have as dry of a texture they're both really nice but it's not as dry of a texture if you want something that is a little bit more creamy of a formula if you don't like dry textured blushes highly recommend that you check out the Valentino ones this is shade number nine I'm blanking on the actual name, but I will have it all listed in the description box. This one is deliciously creamy and see how beautiful of a shade that is. It has good pigment, but it has kind of like this really nice texture on the cheeks where that it doesn't highlight your texture or pores or anything like that. I also have Flirtatious from Mother Pat McGrath. There you go. This one is more pink leaning and I also have Nude Venus from Pat McGrath. So that one is a bit more peachy. So the Dior one is the most subtle one that I have, the most subtle one that I have. I would say though, that I probably like my hourglass blushes a little bit more and my RMS blushes a little bit more, but that's just because I like something a bit more glowy if I am going for a very, very subtle blush. So there are some comparisons for you guys. I hope that that was helpful. And finally here, friends, I have Splendid Rose. So let's get a swatch of this one on the arm. There we go. And I know a lot of you guys wanted a comparison with the other fall blush from Chanel. I think the Chanel one, it's a little bit more mauve, but let's take a look at the swatch here. Yeah, the Chanel one is more of a purpley tone, whereas the one from Dior, it's more of a traditional rose color. And then I also have Divine Rose from Pat McGrath. So let's take a look at that. That one's a little bit more pink, pretty different. And then I also brought out here Paradise Venus because this is the kind of tone that I tend to prefer a little bit more compared to the Dior. See how this one, it's more of like that terracotta color. And then the one from Dior, 
it has more of like that rosy tone. I feel like when this goes on the cheeks, it kind of complements my neutral to warm skin tone a little bit more. And there you have it, friends. You have the swatches, the demos, the comparisons, everything you need to decide if you want to pick up anything from this Dior Holiday Collection. And now it is your turn. Sound off in the comments down below and let me know what you thought of these items. Did you pick any of them up? Which ones do you have your eye on? If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And if you are new here, consider subscribing to my channel. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye. Bye.